You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. On Thursday uh, evening, we learned uh, that LSU had formalized uh, deals and finalized deals and announced the hiring of three assistants. We all knew this already, but it had all been reported and everybody knew it was happening. But LSU made it official late on Thursday with the additions of uh, Corey Raymond, Kevin Peoples, and Jake Olson. What, uh, what we learned today, courtesy of Wilson Alexander uh, over at The Advocate via the Freedom of Information uh, Records Request, are the contract terms. And there's something very interesting therein. I know largely you don't care about the contracts because it ain't your money. And the only reason that you care, and I don't blame you, by the way, the only reason that you should ever care is when the, the contract prohibits you or the school you cheer for from doing something. Like, the reason you should care about a head coaching contract is why... The buyout, as we all learned with Jimbo here, or whatever it may be, if that could preclude you from firing a coach or pursuing another coach. You get it. Uh, but there was interesting an interesting component in, uh, in Corey Raymond's contract, which I'll get to in a second, but let me talk about the other two quickly because those are less significant. Um, Jake Olson, who will be the safeties coach, as we learned, will be an on-field coach at the FBS level for the first time. And he was a, an analyst at Missouri. He was on field at the um, at the G five level. Remember, he coached at uh, and in, in the FCS. He coached at uh, Nichols and Northwestern State. He bounced around a little bit in the state of Louisiana, incidentally. Well, Jake Olson for the first time is going to be an on field coach at the Power Five level, and so he uh, his contract is a two year deal. Most deals are three years. His deal is a two-year deal. He'll make three fifty in year one and four hundred k in year two. That's that is appropriate for a guy getting his first FBS level on field opportunity. As I recall, that's very similar to the contract that um, remember Dennis Johnson Meatball when uh, he was prom promoted from a GA to defensive line coach on Ed Staff. His his contract was was comparable. So uh, Olson Jake Olson will coach safeties. He'll make three fifty year one, four hundred year two, and he's got a two year deal. A uh, Kevin Peoples, three-year deal, which is standard for for your veteran assistants. You get a three-year deal, and his deal is a three-year deal worth seven hundred k per year. So it totals out at two point one million dollars over three years. That is a that is a nice chunk of change for a guy that's going to coach edge rushers. Now remember, you sunk a lot of money into the deal for Bo Davis, which is going to pay him over over three years will escalate to the point where he's making just under one five. So that was that was a, a lot to bite off. And we talked about it at the time was are you willing to set the precedent? You know, I think a lot of people sometimes got caught up in in the in whether LSU could could or couldn't afford. That wasn't the point. It's do you want to set the precedent of paying an assistant a, a million five? Well LSU went there. Well how are they going to make it work otherwise? But the Corey Raymond deal is the most interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, in year one, LSU is going to pay him 200 k Now, the reason for that is he is getting buyout money from Florida, from his Florida deal. So his LSU deal is offset by the money he's getting from Florida. So normally what you would see is mitigation in a contract, meaning, and I don't mean to go into too much detail of this bores you, but essentially... If a coach gets fired, they get buyout money. If they get a new job, the buyout is lessened, right, by the amount they make in the new job. Well, LSU paying Corey Raymond 200 k mitigates whatever loss Corey may have, and he'll apparently get somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 k from Florida. So that'll make him whole with what his contract would be at LSU, right? But LSU only has to pay him 200 k year one. That's significant, especially considering what we just talked about. Then in year two, he'll make seven fifty five, seven hundred fifty five thousand dollars in year two, and then LSU has the option for year three. It's not a three year deal; it's a two year deal with an option for a third year. And in the first year, LSU only has to pay him two hundred thousand dollars. I want to remind you that as this was playing out, and every single day people kept asking, 
When are they going to get the deal done with Corey? When are they going to finish the deal with Corey? What's the latest with Corey? The thing I consistently told you here was there was disagreement. You had people on the coaching staff and in the LSU Athletic Administration that wanted Corey Raymond back and pushed very hard to get him back. I also told you, you had people on staff and in administration who wanted to go a different direction in the secondary. Well, this apparently is the compromise. He's not getting a, a guaranteed three-year deal at that number of 755 or whatever the number would have been. LSU's, LSU, in essence, is only on the hook combined for over over the two years for 700 and I'm excuse me for 955k 200 year one 755 year two and then they have the option for year three so my reading the tea leaves can't we all make the assumption here that this contract was the appeasement this was the way to say okay how about this if if we don't if it's a two year deal with a third year option and year one is only 200K out of pocket, and you get this guy who is this great defensive backs coach who's been here, played at LSU, loves the university, recruits like mad, like that's a great deal, right, for everyone involved, and it is. But the other part of that, I wanted to remind you, is Corey Raymond had to say yes to that. He had to be willing to take 200 from his employer in, in year one and not have a three-year deal, but have a two-year deal with a team option for year three. He had to, to be willing to take that. And I think this suggests two things. Number one, this is the compromise that was met to get Corey back on staff. And number two, how badly he wanted to be home. And you can sit there and tell me, well, he got fired and didn't have options. No, 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 no. Like, with the amount of information I've shared with you, I think you could probably gather I got a pretty good hold on this situation. And ultimately, Billy Napier and Corey Raymond were oil and water at, in Gainesville. They didn't see eye to eye. It didn't go well. The, the defense didn't play well. Napier needed a fall guy. They fired Corey. But believe me when I tell you, they were both perfectly fine with that, with that parting. And Corey wanted to come home. Actually, he never wanted to leave. But that's water under the bridge at this point. It spilled milk. Brian Kelly came in. And it was his prerogative to hire the staff as he sees fit as it is for any head coach who gets a job. And especially when you're inheriting a situation like Brian Kelly inherited in Baton Rouge, where the team was bad, the culture was bad, the structure was bad, everything was bad. So in some instances, the baby went out with the bathwater. Corey Raymond, Greg McMahon, Tommy Moffitt, there were great coaches who got let go because they were associated with a thing that was being completely uprooted and changed. And that was okay. Brian Kelly needed to change the culture and do it his way, and he did. But that doesn't mean Corey wanted to leave, and clearly you could tell how badly he wanted to come back So by, by his willingness to take this deal. So I think it illustrates how we got to this point. Now, the contract illustrates how we got to this point, how ultimately they got this deal across the finish line, and now you got to prove it. If you're Corey Raymond. Because that third year isn't guaranteed. So got to go make it make it happen. And I was telling you, man, I had a conversation uh, earlier today. Um, let's just say uh, Corey Raymond and Frank Wilson last night, maybe they just picked up right where they left off as if nothing had ever changed. And they were grinding away late last night on the recruiting trail. So Tigers are out there trying to put the finishing touches here on the 2024 class with February signing day just a few weeks away, and then obviously you could always go in on guys in the portal and continue to try to add and build toward a championship roster. So uh, contracts, uh, Wilson Alexander with the, with the news, hat tip Wilson doing a great job for the new assistants, Jake Olson, Kevin Peoples, and Corey Raymond. Different type of contract structure for Corey, but it's something that got this thing done, and now it's, uh, it's time to go prove it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.